I see your name immediately when I'm looking at the chat thread, a beautiful luminaire who was in last year's mentorship group and is here to support our guest today, which is in this year's mentorship group. His name is Abiel Morales. But before we dive into that, I just want to say hi, get everybody in and settled in and encourage you that if you're hearing anything today that you really resonate with, I like to kind of remind you guys why we're gathering in community is for the expansion of it. And today's guest can do that for you just in a brief conversation. There's something magical about how he sees the world, especially about how he talks about it. He sprinkles in personal experiences. And I often leave the conversation with him going, wait, I wanted to take notes. Where was my pen? I'm so enlightened. Now I have to go make 10 t-shirts, 20 bumper stickers. I've got these phrases that I really resonate with. So I'm prepping you guys <laughs> to expand your minds and open your ears a little bit bigger so that we can really get into what Abiel is going to be sharing with us today. He is a man that is extremely passionate for life. He has found the importance of the human skills, which we're gonna ask him what those human skills are, and where he shares all of his information and his findings in his podcast called The Emotional Compass. And you can find him at theemotionalcompass.com. His podcast is not only on his website, you can go to Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, you can go pretty much anywhere and find it. Today, we're gonna to cover some topics, especially how the back nine in golf can increase your spiritual gain. And if you're going, what? Just wait for it, okay? Because he's going to describe it all. So without any more of me stealing the precious time from Abiel, here he is. Luminaires, meet Abiel Morales. Hi. Hi, how are you, Jamie? Thank you for having me here. Oh my God, I'm so grateful. It has been such a pleasure to hang out with you for the last five months and observe how you see the world and how expansive you are. <laughs> Before we get into some of the details of that, can you just take a brief moment and share with us, like, how did you get where you are today? <laughs> That's a very simple question to ask you, but um, like, give us some background. I think it started when I was a kid, just trying to understand the why, why things work a certain way. And I was very devoted Christian growing up. And there were a lot of questions that weren't really answered. They were given to me like simply like, oh, it's, it's faith. You have to have faith. And uh, it works because uh, it's written. And I always found that I, I need to search. I need to figure out for myself why things work the way they do. So when I was like in my teens and my early 20s, I was exposed to so much more information. And I started realizing that the world that I perceived out there was an interpretation of who I was inside. And that was the biggest eye opener for me. No longer was I attached to this victimhood mentality that things were happening to me. It was more like, wow, can I be aware of what I'm manifesting because that which is happening out there is a perfect correlation of what I'm creating inside. So if I want to change the world out there, I must start changing the world inside. So the beginnings were more of a, a humbling waking up to seeing that everything out there was a reflection of the inside. And that led to a lot of different things. Well, it led to a lot of different things that I want to talk about, <laughs> especially this aha moment in marriage of golf and concepts of spirituality. I mean, that's not something that we normally compare. Yeah, totally. Well, how? <laughs> that's a good question. So it was, I believe, 2003, and I was in my senior year of college. And I had been into sports for a very long time. And I felt like, man, I could, I could take a ball and put it in the hoop or, you know, I could grab a racket and play ping pong or, you know, it just felt easy. And when I got to golf, I felt that was going to be the easiest sport of them all. So 
I literally got a job in golf and I started working on my golf game. And soon thereafter, I realized that I could definitely increase my golf skills, but my score wasn't improving. And I start realizing that in golf, it takes less than two seconds to hit a golf ball, but the round of golf itself is four plus hours. So if you combine all the time that it takes for you to hit a golf ball, it's less than 20 minutes from the time you're preparing to hit a shot to the time that you hit the ball. But the times in between is where you really have to compose yourself and manage all the monkey brain that affects how you perceive the world. So I was limited not by my golf skills, but by my I was limited by my personal skills on how to cope with myself in the quiet times. So like, go ahead. Your monkey brain. Is that what you're saying? The like that was, yeah. that was the thing that was inhibiting the game? My monkey brain was affecting my brain, my, my golf game. You get you see, when whenever you're playing golf, you're gonna be resonating at, at a certain frequency. That could be excitement, that could be fear, that could be anger, frustration. And depending on what frequency you're vibrating at, you're going to perceive your golf game at that frequency. It's almost like running an app. If, if you're running the wrong app to hit a golf shot, you're going to get a really bad result. Because in golf, it's kind of weird. You're, you're not really playing golf. You're manifesting the ball to go to a certain spot. And you're going to get glimpse, glimpses of the ball going to where it's going to go through intuitions and imagery. So a lot of the times, if an architect is really good in golf, he'll place a strategic bunker or water hazard or lateral hazard in a place that's going to affect your golf swing. So you're going to start sending impulses of images to where the ball is, what you want it to go and where you fear it to, for it to go. And because the fear is, is a program that is so innate within us, your ball will listen to the fear versus listen to your wants. And it's the same it's the same thing with life. Okay. So you are taking the frequency of emotions, like you listed a few, anger, excitement, fear, and you're saying that when we possess those emotions, that that frequency is so big, it consumes us. And when we get engaged in the act of golf or anything else you just mentioned, that's how it is in life as well, that it then is expressed out into that game. Correct. That's our, our viewpoint. Correct. It's like, uh, you know how you have your, your tablet and you pick the color you want to paint with? Imagine the emotions being the colors and you're going to be painting regardless, but a lot of the times people are blind or unaware of which color they're painting with and they blame the world for the color that's appearing in front of them. So golf is one of those things where your emotions dictate how you perceive the world and how you execute onto the golf course. And by becoming aware of our emotions and how we process these emotions, we have the ability to take responsibility and not control because emotions is a funny thing. If you try to control emotions, it gets worse. But you have the ability to let go of the emotions that are no longer serving you. And through time, you could, through the practice of mindfulness and through the practice of letting go, you could then start shedding the emotions, the layers, the programming that no longer serves you. And just like the Buddhist like to talk about enlightenment is not so much that we're not enlightened beings is that we possess all these different emotions and and limitations that block our true essence from shining and i look at enlightenment not as this mystical place of being i look at enlightenment as unburdenment all your burdens no longer are being held they actually slide off and, and your true self then can manifest the golf of your dreams or when you let go of the things that are no longer serving you, then you can manifest the life of your dreams because golf is a reflection of life. You go from hole to hole 
and you manage yourself to the best of your abilities to produce the best possible outcomes. I'm processing the beautiful statement you made about enlightenment. You know, how it's not this location or this place or being, but it's the unburdenment. Like, that's a beautiful way of flipping it around and looking at it. It's a, it's a lifestyle, it's a way of being. And if we're unburdened, yeah, you can see it that way. You're getting a lot of hellos and a few luminaires who are showing their like insight on golf sharing, such as Shelly Ham is going, well, golf is 99% mental. <laughs> oh, like and Scotty said he is so excited. He is ready to learn how um, the interesting perspective of golf and spirituality he was even teasing and saying, let me go pop some popcorn. He's getting ready to settle in and just like dive into the topic. Um, oh, Michelle Demet says, hi, Abiel. Love hearing your perspective. Can we do everything with love and mindfulness, including golf? Oh, we can do everything. Not a question, Jamie. With love and mindfulness, including golf. <laughs> Sarah Bahia says, this is fascinating perspective. Abiel, you should have, you have a wonderful mind. Thanks for sharing with us. Uh, I might need some new prescriptions as I'm mumbling over words today, but um, getting back to how you're viewing the world, because it is this mindfulness, this unshedding of the burden and how you found golf, the act of playing golf, the sport itself as one of your, if I may be so bold, one of your biggest teachers you know, getting put out onto the course, having those hours and really struggling with self. How do you translate all of this knowledge into helping somebody let go and find that mindfulness? I know that you have, oh, you have done some work in NLP. Um, you really stand firmly with hypnosis. You get behind the concept of self-talk, like having the conversation with oneself. I'd love to hear and for you to talk more about that to the luminaires. For sure. It would be my pleasure. Ah. Um, one of the things that was very interesting is that uh, there was this research done with, with mice that were exposed to uh, a stimulus. <laughs> and when they were exposed to the stimulus, um, they would get an electrical impulse or shock uh, to the mouse, which would, you know, trigger the cortisol response, which is uh, through fear through the kidneys. And they realized that once that mouse had had offspring, the mice that hadn't been exposed to the shocks, but exposed to the stimulus would get a, a cortisol spike. So with that being said, our genes have this magical ability to transfer to us all the fears and limitations of our parents. And then as we start growing up, then they, they keep on reinforcing that through their, their actions and their words. So when it's your turn to go out into the world, they have equipped you to, with all the tools for survival. But unfortunately, a lot of these tools are not meant for you to thrive. They're meant for you to survive. So as you're moving along in life, you have to realize that there's a lot of self-talk that is not coming from you. It's actually coming from your genes. It's coming from your parents. So the act of hypnosis or hypnagogic state is one which is talking to the hidden aspects of yourself or your shadow self or your subconscious self. And we could start becoming aware of those through mindfulness. And one of the things about mindfulness is very interesting is like, we have the ability to focus on kind of like one or two things tops. So if I were to tell you that you are think about, you know, don't, don't try to think about an elephant, you know, an elephant pops in your brain. Or if I th say, do not hit the ball into the bunker, you're going to visualize the ball going into the bunker. So there are a lot of elements that are hidden to us in how we work. And by me saying, don't hit it into the bunker is not gonna help me hit it onto the fairway or the green. 
th this is where the tricky part starts. By me staying present, observing the thought of not wanting to hit it in the bunker and relaxing to that idea and being okay with that idea of the ball going into the bunker, you all of a sudden start to shed away the, the limiting beliefs or, or the, the thoughts that are affecting you out into the universe. Because there's this element of wanting to change that keeps you stuck in that pattern. Because the mind doesn't understand a positive or a negative. It, it just takes the command. Um, don't do that, you dummy. Um, all these self-talks really affect how you perceive yourself or how you see yourself. So what I loved about hypnosis is that you start chipping away at the image that you have created that's buried inside. And one of the beautiful things about the human experience is as a soul, we are here to chisel away from all the limiting beliefs that we have created in this lifetime that are the challenges that we signed up for so we could keep on growing and becoming more love, which we are love experiencing love itself. And, you know, all that is encompassing can have no opposite, which is love. Um, and hence, there lies the peace of God. The illusion is that of fear. And your awareness of that fear, your being okay with the fear, is your only way out of the fear. And we have a three to one bias towards negativity. That's, that's like your offset programming. And our ability to be present gives us the choice. Our ability to be present allows us to have that free will available to us to make the changes that we want in our lives, in our golf games, in our careers, in our relationships. So the inner monkey, that inner, inner chatter that's constantly communicating to you the things that you don't want and the things that you do want, all that commentary is one aspect of yourself is not your true self is not your whole self and our relationship to how we cope with that and how we deal with that is what gives us the tools to you know take control of our lives and co-create with the people around you and with the energies and essences that are there to aid you and that's one of the things that i found that was fascinating fascinating about NLP and hypnosis or tools that allowed us to talk to our inner selves, that there's a lot of forms that you could use for self hypnosis. And there's a lot of amazing hypnotherapists out there and hypnosis out there that could, you know, start putting a chink in the code that allows that code to no longer serve you. Um, and then put the code that you want in there instead of the code that you've been programmed with. Oh, I am all ears. And it was nice to hear from a few lumineers while you were chatting. And I was writing down those phrases that really resonate with me in the chat thread. Katie P is joining and saying, yeah, it's about letting go, releasing and taking a swing. No pun intended. And then agrees with me that yes, words that fall from your mouth, there's so many bumper stickers to be had. <laughs> it's like, I would like to know a little bit more. I've never heard the statement before. You mentioned there's a three to one bias to negativity. Like that's the way we're wired, right? Yeah. We do that for survival techniques. Correct. Is that true? Yes, 100%. Let, let's say you come across uh, another apex predator. Your psyche, your reptilian brain has to imprint that as hard as possible to ensure the survival of your species. Um, so when it comes to like stepping out of traffic's way, that that fear that you experience through your cortisol that's being released released to your kidneys creates a really really dense imprint through your neural pathway connections. And then once those have been solidified, um, then they're they're stuck there for life. You could then start creating connections with other neural pathways um, but if it's not a negative experience it takes obviously three more times for it to be imprinted so i i always say think about your life and how horrible it is 
and it's you know three times better than what you think your base is. So I always tell golfers, you are three times a better golfer than you could ever think of or imagine because you're not programmed to understand how good you are. You're programmed to understand how bad you are. And that's always mind blowing to them. Wow. <laughs> Do you take time and meet people on the golf course these days? Oh, where are you putting your efforts? So most of my efforts currently is going towards writing my book um, that I'm going to be discussing uh, later on. Uh, the book requires, uh, there's so many different modalities. So golf is such a technical sport and most of the golf community is so into the new driver or the new swing or are you one plane or are you reverse pivot or are you clearing your hips that they forget about what states of allow you to work to the best of your abilities on the golf course. Um, we don't all have that plug that we could put on the back of our heads and go, I know Kung Fu or I know golf. So it's not like the matrix. It actually takes a lot more work than being programmed by a computer. But the beauty, the beautiful thing about it all is we, we are the programmers to our life. But are you aware that you are programming yourself? For instance, uh, one of the things that I see the most on the golf course is the practice tee, where people have the ability to hit ball after ball onto a driving range. And this is a new invention. Golf has been around for over 300 years, and it wasn't until the 1950s where they decided to create a field for people to hit balls towards, where they don't have to be burdened by the limitations of a golf course. And so many people I see out there grab their golf clubs, set one ball up, hit it, and then they're like, damn, oh no. So if you think about it, anytime a, a golfer that's complaining about their golf shot and, and creating a negative emotion towards the golf shot after a bad shot, it's actually programming that bad shot into their psyche. So instead of them hitting a, a golf shot and letting go, like, okay, that, that was not that best, and then they hit a good one, they go, yes, right? That type of golfer would then start ingraining or hardwiring good shots into their psyche. So golfers, by and large, have been taught by society to not be boastful, but to show that they're working hard at their game. And because of that, most golfers program themselves to be worse golfers, not better golfers, by putting emotional outbursts towards bad shots. So in my mind, it's like, how insane is it that people are not realizing that they are solidifying their neurological pathways to bad golf instead of good golf? It's like, this, this is crazy. And why is it okay that we accept the golfer that goes, oh, that sucked this, and we're like, oh, better luck next time. But when you nail it and it's perfect, that we don't want to see them celebrate it. Oh, oh, now you're boastful. Oh, oh. Yeah, we would have to get into spiral dynamics and talk about like the development of like societies and groups and systems to to get get into that spot, in my opinion. Because Dude, I know better than to ask you about spiral dynamics. It breaks my brain when you get into this. So I would like to propose, and I know I'm putting you on the spot. Would you love to come back and have, or would you like to come back and have another conversation specifically on spiral dynamics and talk about how um, th things can unravel? Absolutely. Love and spiral dynamics go hand in hand for me. I, I love that type of stuff. Uh, uh, I'm writing this down. You know when I write it down, you can't go back. Yep. I'm game. Oh Guys, luminaires, you'll have to show up for this one. Um, Scotty saying the power of positive thoughts and affirmations. That's very important. But also, I got it. I, when I when I started hearing that phrase growing up, and when I started getting into spirituality, I I also limited myself from not experiencing the negative emotions and the negativity, because it's one thing to let go of it, and then it's another thing to suppress it or shun it. So I just wanted to, to make a, a very clear distinction 
that it's very powerful to have positive emotions, but it's also very powerful to have negative emotions, but not be attached to them. So experiencing the negativity is crucial. It's almost like saying all emotions are like a full keyboard of, of, of a piano and saying the low notes are not as good as the high notes. They're all crucial. Honoring our emotions as we experience them are the most beautiful gift that we've had as a human being. But being attached to the negative ones, that's where we get in trouble. It is. It's what we choose to hold on to instead of move through. Correct. Yes. So Correct. much so. Well, I wanted to take some time and, and read a few of the comments. Give a wonderful shout out to Vina Chalice. She's also in our mentorship group in 2021. She's here supporting you. It's so nice to see her. Um, KDP is sharing how this is resonating so much and so deeply and giving a ton of thanks for you. Pamela Warman is here. Beautiful man. Beautiful man speaking his truth. Yay, Pam, who's also in our mentorship group. Shout out. That um, woman. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm so happy you said that. Dan Fulgham is saying, wow, I'd love to play around golf with you, but I play Frisbee golf. Maybe you would make a little exception there. Um, <laughs> I was looking for a comment that I loved, and of course, it scrolls so fast. But um, it was a mom saying that this is a great way of sharing mindfulness and spirituality with her son without sounding so woo woo. And if that is you who have said that, please type in your name again. I'd love to give you the credit because I thought that was really wonderful to hear. And you're getting a lot of spiral fractures and energy talk that way. They would love to have a little bit more of that. And um, Kiara says, oh, remember to like this video. <laughs> That's a really good one. Yes, if you like what you're hearing, if you resonate with what's being said, if you're just listening to Abiel and you're kind of like in my shoes, where I just go, uh-huh, and, then please take the time, step over to this link here. It's up on our chat threads now. It'll take you directly to theemotionalcompass.com, the landing site for the podcast. Hit the RSS, that's the feed button, or if you're already a member on Apple or Google or Spotify, iHeartRadio, there's so many out there, that find, type in Abby Al Morales, type in The Emotional Compass, you'll see the podcast pop up, and please follow it. His words and who he is with us today is exactly who he is and how he represents all of this emotional, deep inner guidance in his podcast. So don't miss out on it. Keep feeding yourself that energy and connection you're really looking for. That's how we create our change. For sure. This has been so wonderful. I love speaking with you. And please, please, please continue to write the book. I want to be the first to read it. <laughs> I'll be the first in line to buy it. And um, even with all of this incredible information said, I like to ask people that I hang out with, you know, is there a, a mantra, a, a golden nugget, an affirmation? Is there something that you use as part of like a foundational support for yourself every day that you can enlighten us or share with us? Absolutely. Um... The, the journey of this human experience where, you know, consciousness meets the road, right? Where you become aware of, of your mind is, is the first steps towards manifesting the life of your dreams because it's the moment that we become awake. And I can't stress enough the importance of building that mindfulness practice of meditation because in meditation is the time where nothing is happening but that monkey brain is constantly active. So by becoming mindful and, and working on our meditation, we could start creating an understanding of who we are versus what our mind is producing. I always say, you know, we have a stomach that digests food. We have a heart that's meant to love. And we also have a, a mind that is nonstop creating. And if we think we are the stomach, we think we are the heart, we are, we are a creation of all of it. 
and through meditation and mindfulness, we get to co-create a better world. And if we want to change the world, what a better place to start that to change ourselves. So work on that meditation and know that you are love. And the only illusion is that you're not. Yes. And can you just repeat all of that one more time? And I can <laughs> You are love and the illusion is that you're not. <laughs> I am so happy this is recorded because I can go back and play that little like one minute clip you just did. <laughs> Maybe I can like put it on my phone. That's what wakes me oh, up. In the morning. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great to hear that? Like every day somebody tell you this and then like, okay, I've set the tone for my day. Yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing too is be, be mindful of how you hold yourself, um, that how you flex your face. I like to say, be mindful of how you flex your face because all those are neurologically uh, linked to emotions as well. So whenever you see yourself frowning, just relax the eyebrows, relax the cheekbones, relax. I always say relax your skull um, because all those will actually open up the pathways to uh, to better thoughts. I'm going to remember that. Can we have that like a hashtag, relax your skull? <laughs> the Emotional Compass podcast, <laughs> relax your skull. Come on, that's really good stuff. I'm telling you. The, 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 gurus, you. the gurus say relax the spot between your eyebrows <laughs> and like put the energy there. And uh, I use it for my golf rounds where I'm just becoming very mindful. Love it. Well, you also have a really wonderful um, Instagram and that supports your podcast as well. So if you guys are over on Instagram and you love getting very inspirational, beautiful comments in the voice and tone of the Abiel, mm -hmm. then head over to Instagram. I put the link up on the chat thread and for those luminaires that are hanging out over in the world of Facebook, here is the Emotional Compass on Facebook. You can like and follow and feed yourself this frequency every day. Abiel, thank you so very much for this. And I'm hitting you up. We're going to put a date up and we're going to just talk about spiral fractures. So that'll be like a four hour conversation, you think? <laughs> Spiral dynamics, we could spend spiral dynamics. We could spend a week on it and it's fabulous and it's it's one model of how humans develop. Um, and like NLP talks about, let's not forget the map for the territory. Because just because we have a model of how things develop and work doesn't mean it's applicable to you. And to a certain degree, it's very limiting that model but it might give you uh, an understanding and compassion to how you could perceive your neighbor because he might be totally different than the way you are. But within the model, it allows you to embrace their perfection and where they are in their development. Okay, again, it's a four hour conversation. I'll be sure to book the afternoon and we'll just go live. Done, I'm in. But if anybody is out there and really wants more with Abiel, I know that you're doing some consultations with people. You do them remotely. And if they're local to where you are in Florida, you'll do them in person and even on the golf course. Is that true? That would be, that would be ideal. Um, you know, I could see tension in the golf swing. It's almost like, you know how you could see auras? I could see tension in the golf swing. Oh, my God. <laughs> What about people who don't play golf, not pointing any fingers, but can they go on the golf course with you and get the same guidance? I, I would much rather have a, talk, a walk on the beach and talk about spirituality than on the golf course if that's the, if that's the case. I think golf has been the medium that has allowed me to open up and wake up, but removing the boundaries of the golf course. And I re realize it's my walk on earth that has opened me up and exposed me to reality and spirituality. Well, if anybody is looking for your services, they can at least ping you during or on Instagram or Facebook. 
I know your website is up and coming. Um, there was technical issues or difficulties, which happens. And so it's not up right now, but it will be. And that's going to be your name, abielmorales.com. So you'll be able to find him very easily, guys, when you do your Google search. It was Cher Odell, who is very excited about your book and presenting this way of mindfulness and spirituality to her son. So I wanted to shout out that way. <laughs> Aurela is saying, been listening to this only for a couple of minutes. Conversation vibe is super dope. Thank you to you too, Colleen, and all the Lumineers who participated in their vibe. <laughs> Brooke wants to know what's your website's name again? <laughs> Abielmorales.com. <laughs> it's spelled right there underneath his face, Brooke. <laughs> the domain disappeared this morning, and I'm like, how can that be? It was just gone. It's just gone. But it is there. It'll be back up and running, but you can always head over to Instagram and it's all the emotional compass for website, Instagram, Facebook, and we put those links up. Thank you so much for being here, Abiel. I am, I'm just so delighted that you're in the world. This is really great. Thank you. Ditto, Jamie. Thank you so much for what you do. The fact that we could have these type of conversations where we discuss spirituality and all the things that are outside of the realm of logic, the fact that we have this platform reminds me of how much we're evolving and we're continuing to grow. And thank you for doing all that work, Jamie. The universe thanks you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> for you, Luminaires, thank you so much for lending me your time, your ears, your eyes, an open heart, your willingness to find new material, new people that hold the same high vibe that you're looking for in life. If you want to find out more, Come back at 120. We'll be talking to another mentor E, Crystal Desai, who is a painter, works um, psychology with poetry, prose, and painting. It is mind blowing. It is not a surprise that these two have landed on the same day. It is such an incredible heart opening experience with the both of them. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's at 120 Eastern Standard Time. So it's 20 minutes past the next hour, wherever you are in the world, Luminaires. I hope that you'll be able to make it. And remember, this is not woo-woo. It's true-true. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. Maitland says bye. <laughs> bye, Abiel. <laughs> bye.